Thank you very much for coming. Just a, a quick introduction. And this is Jared Kubakawa. He's a Toyahashi uh, Jolt member. And he works Hello, at Jared. 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 Aichi <laughs> University. And today he's going to talk about second language creative writing. And the title of his his um, today is Anyone Can Write in Shin Haiku. So over to you, Jared. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Oh, well, sorry. If, if you want to, any questions, if you put them in the chat box. Okay. That's it. Go. Okay. Just a second. And I sh can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, Not we yet. Can. Oh, yeah. maybe I'm the, on the wrong view. I can't see it. Yes or no? Huh. Oh, yes. I can see a list of, uh, sorry. Little haikus there. Oh, I can now. I've got to switch to screen share to do it. Yeah. To okay. See. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Um, happy to see so many uh, smiling faces. Happy Sunday. So, um, yes, as Brent said, today my presentation is Anyone Can Write a Shin Haiku. So really quick, I'm Jared. Um, I teach at Aichi University. I'm from the US and I live in Toyohashi. Um, I studied TESOL and creative writing as a student. So my interests are involved with second language creative writing and second language writing, or I say L2 writing. So if I say that, that's what I mean, L2 writing. And also I'm interested in corpus linguistics. Um, so and I'll give you my email address and I have a website as well at the end of the presentation. Um, right now I'm going to give you something to download in the chat that we will use later, but I'll just do that now so that um, you guys will have it. So these are PDFs of my students' creative writing and we will use these in the teaching demonstration that I will do today. So feel free to download those at, at your own leisure as we start talking. And uh, you can turn your mics off if that would be okay, just so there's no echo or anything. And for the video, you can keep it on or turn it off, whatever you feel comfortable. Okay. And I will ask you to participate in the chat today, if that's okay. Um, probably not speaking, and maybe we'll do some speaking, but um, if we have time, but I will ask you maybe to write in the chat. So I hope that's okay. All right, so let's get going. So today, of course, uh, you see the title there. Anyone can write a Shin Haiku. We will talk about Shin Haiku in just a moment. So let me tell you what I'm going to do today. Um, two parts, essentially, to my presentation. And the first one is kind of the scholarly academic part where I will talk about the place of L2 um, writing and creative writing in the in a, any curriculum and um, secondly I will do a teaching demonstration and hopefully I will prove that anyone can write a shin haiku from elementary school students all the way up okay so that's what I'm doing today so let's start off what is creative writing so of course everybody thinks fairies and fiction right here's a picture of some fairies for you so of course it can be poetry, stories, drama, songs, but it doesn't have to be, okay? Creative nonfiction can essentially include anything. And Maloney at NUFS writes that creative nonfiction casts its net across all manner of practical and vital forms, such as writing an email, responding to course content, a journal, writing a letter, making a homepage, making a shopping list even, Okay, all of this can be creative nonfiction. So essentially, it, creative nonfiction is anything. Therefore, creative writing is simply teaching students how to communicate effectively in writing. So that's what we'll talk about today. All right, so what is haiku and what is shin haiku? I'm sure many of you are familiar with haiku, of course, um, and of, we're in Japan, as you well know. Um, so haiku is a form of, short form of Japanese poetry consisting of basically four main elements. Okay, it's usually split into three lines. Remember this, three lines? It has a season word. So 
um, the season word represents when the haiku was written. This is quite interesting and very unique to the form of haiku. And it essentially acts as a time machine, if you think about it. I can read a poem written 500 years ago by Basho, and I know the exact season and even the place where he's written it. So in that way, haiku will bring you back to that exact moment. Um, and also because they're written in the present tense, it feels like you're there. So I like to say haiku is a time machine. Okay, the third part of haiku is what we in Japanese called kireji. It's also called the cut or the turn. And in, as a literary vice, it's called the, the sezura. Okay, it provides juxtaposition. Will there be, there'll be, for example, two lines and then the poem will turn and the scope will go way out or way in, or it'll be a different idea that you wouldn't think would be connected, but actually it is, and it makes the poem into one whole. So in English, we often express the, the, the kireji as a dash, an ellipsis, a comma, a colon, semicolon, okay? Usually expressed as, expressed as punctuation in English, okay? And of course, haiku follows 575, which everybody knows. But shin haiku, or new haiku, it's a more modern, and it, it focuses on the meaning rather than the meter, the form and the meter. So it will contain the first three. It'll be three lines. It'll have a kigo, and it'll have a kireji, but no 575. So you can throw that out, and it really frees you up to do... To, to just have more freedom to write um, however you feel. Sometimes English haiku follow a 353, but Shin haiku is open form. So I hope you feel free and relaxed to write. And you don't have to count syllables on your fingers, which is the classic haiku thing. So for example, this is one of my students. Let's just read one, her Shin haiku. I can't sleep waiting for Santa. It's my dad. So you can see uh, the Kigo, of course, is Santa. So we know that it's Christmas time. Actually, it's Christmas Eve, probably, or Christmas Day. Um, the turn is a dash, the Kireji, because we have set part one is I can't sleep waiting for Santa. And then the turn says, oh, actually, she knows that Santa's not real and it's her dad but she's pretending to know essentially for his sake. So it's a child mm, still pretending to be a child. Um, I thought that was quite interesting that, uh, you know, sometimes children hold up their parents. Okay, anyone can write a Shin Haiku. So this is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, oops. So young learners, I said anyone, so even elementary school students, if you're familiar with magnetic poetry, they don't need to physically write the words, they can use word cards such as this. So if you are teaching elementary school in Japan, in Japan to Japanese students, um, feel free to make some little word cards and have them arrange them how they see fit, okay? And if they're a little bit older, they can make a, a small drawing or something that looks like this. And um, of course, you can, we, I work with university students, so with adult students. And hai, uh, Shin Haiku is best used, I think, as a review activity at the end of a unit. And they can use some of the vocabulary and uh, things that they learned. Or you can also use it as a starter activity. And I encourage students to use dictionaries. I think it builds learner autonomy, vocabulary. They learn how to use a reference uh, manual. Maybe you can hear our baby crying. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so why teach Shin Haiku to students? Let's talk. Of course, it's short brevity, short and powerful. Um, it's the essence of poetry. If you think about a long poem, you just take the most important, the best part of it, okay? Next, oops, it's accessible. The form is simple and the rules are easy to understand. I just explained them and 
I'm pretty sure everyone can kind of gather the meaning pretty easily. In Japan, it's great because students already understand haiku. They, they understand the, the form. They understand why you would write a haiku. There's a lot of cultural knowledge transfer. And of course, L1 transfer from your Japanese students. They know the word haiku, shin haiku, kigo, kireji, senryu. They're also familiar with poets such as Basho, Shiki, Isa, Busan. So there's a lot of work already done for you um, if you bring this into your classroom. Um, of course, language use and specifically language awareness and audience awareness. It increases their vocabulary in use. Maybe they'll learn some new vocabulary. And anyone can do it. It's about arranging the language in an interesting way. All right, even Snoopy can write one. Okay, some common misconceptions really quick. So writing is not as important as speaking. This is a very common misconception about um, L2 writing in general. Boo -boo. Okay, writing, Yoshida says, writing is ultimately the most important of the four skills because it be, can be used to summarize the content of spoken discussions. Essentially, he says that you speak to maybe one person or a group, but you can write to thousands of people, especially with um, the internet and things like that. Uh, okay, good. Sorry, Brent, I forgot to admit this person. That's okay, that's okay. That's my fault. No, don't worry. Okay. Um, where was I? Sorry. So in also um, writing frees students from the emotionally stressful, possibly stressful situation of speaking on the spot directly. Two other misconceptions could be that only advanced students can do creative writing or the teacher themselves can't do creative writing, so they don't know how to teach it. Okay. Um, so Maloney says in, a, in an interview that when I interviewed him, the creative writing doesn't require students to learn new vocabulary or structures, but it allows them to explore what they already have. Okay. So even if you're working with really young learners and they just know colors or numbers, they can use what they know and arrange that in a way that they see fit. And so we will write a poem today. Uh, and I'll show you that anyone can write a haiku, shin haiku. All right. So now I'm going to kind of change and flip into my um, my teaching demonstration. Okay. So now go from kind of scholarly to teacherly. So I, I will put on my teaching voice. Okay. And you guys can act as students. So feel free you know, to play up the, the role of being a student or whatever you like. All right, let's start the teaching demonstration. Ready? Good morning, everyone. So let's write a Shin Haiku today. First, Good we're going to do uh, a reading to writing cycle in four parts. The first part of our lesson today, we're going to read some poems that other Japanese students have written. Okay, so they are second language English writers, just like you. Okay, and then we're going to say, why do we like these poems? So I like this poem because. Okay, then we'll think about those poems. Think about your experience, and then let's write a poem. And last, we're going to think about it and talk to a partner about our poem. Okay, let's go. Um, so your first assignment, um, everyone has downloaded the uh, books that I put in the chat, please. So you can choose one. Oh, here, I'll put them in the chat again for people who haven't gotten them yet. Hey, Professor Jared. Hi, Kurt, how are you? You know, surviving through a cold. Good, I hope you're okay. Me too, I hope I don't got the, the Rona. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Um, good, so please download the journals in the chat if you haven't already. And if you have, feel free to open one up. Okay, let's start our first and second part, which was choose and articulate. So I'll give you a few minutes to kind of skim, read through the literary journal written by other Aichi University students, same as you. They're all L2 writers. 
Okay, so pick one haiku that you like and copy and paste it into the chat. Just like this, I'll do a quick demonstration. So I like this one. Okay, I'm gonna copy it and then I'm gonna go to the chat and I'm gonna paste it. Okay, and I'll put the book in the chat again, Richard. All right, I'll give you two minutes. I'll start the timer. Thanks. When you hear the piano sound, please stop. Okay, so go ahead and uh, find a haiku you like and paste it into the chat. Hi, Dozo. Um, one moment, Richard. Um, yeah, you, you've just pasted the, the haiku fireworks in the sky into the chat. That's all, all I've got. So at least you can paste in there. Do you have don't a, noise? Did you I don't know why the link hasn't come through? Do you see it now? All I can see is fireworks in the sky fade away and flutter down. Seems like sunflowers. You mm, you copied see. that and pasted that, but not the. It's weird. That's another haiku. The, a hot yeah. day, jump into the pool. Very cool. I think your settings are, are something's wrong with your settings because everyone else got them and I'm trying to drag it specifically to you and it's not working. Mm. So what I'll do is strange. I'll just, you can see my screen. I'll just scroll through and you can choose. You did, you did paste fireworks in the sky into it. Okay. And I've got that. But for some reason I cannot drag a file for you. Yeah. Mm. Strange. It won't let me do it, Richard. And you, and you can't copy it. Uh, I guess I could try to copy everything. Uh, that would mess up the chat. Can you just, oh, yeah. you can right. see my screen. You can just choose uh -huh. one if you like. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Actually, hold on. I got a clue. I, I got yeah. a thing here. Okay. Richard, I'm sending you a, yeah. a Google link. All right. And I just uploaded it to. So now let's see if you could download from a link. Thank you very much, Kurt. Okay. Thanks. That. Did you get that uh, message I sent you, bud? Thanks, Kurt. Yeah. I've got the link. Let's see what happens if I do that. Oh, okay. Oh, did you hear the noise? Did, yeah, I guess that means time's up. That means time's up, Richard. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you can feel free to choose another. Can't, can't write a shin haiku, obviously. <laughs> We're just reading at this point. Don't worry. All right. So now. Be prepared to talk about why you like it, what imagery does it use, what nouns and action verbs, and what season word, why can't I go back? All right, so I'll put these questions in the chat. Why do you like it? What imagery? Uh, what nouns, verbs, and what season is it? Okay, so you can see those in the chat. I'm actually gonna put you in breakout rooms for just two minutes, okay? Talk to your friends, talk to your friend or friends about these four and share your haiku. Please join a breakout room. Okay, there you go. Can I really? Are you okay, Richard? Okay, there we go.
Okay, welcome back, everyone. I'm sorry the time was so short, but I hope you got to communicate with your partner a bit. All right, my students, are you ready for step three? Yeah. Let's write a shin haiku. So feel free to write on your computer or write on paper, however you feel comfortable. I'll give you a few minutes. You can turn off your video if you want. Um, so just express your feelings here in a three-line poem in English. Try to use a season word in a kireji if you'd like. All right. And so if you're ready to go, you can start now. If you need some hints, you can look at my screen. All right. Good luck writing. Let's go. Don't worry, Richard, it's okay. <laughs> How long have we got? <laughs> Two hours. Uh... <laughs> I'll give you another minute, is that okay? Yeah. I can't get it to do, to change lines, so I'll put slash, forward slash instead. Otherwise it just gets sent. Okay, and if you're starting to finish, Richard's already way ahead of time, but please paste your poem into the chat so everyone else can read it, if you feel comfortable doing that. If you don't, that's okay. But let's share our poems with each other in the chat, okay? So you can copy and paste or type it in there. If you can't put it into three lines, don't worry. I'll put mine in. All right. Well, they're coming in thick and fast. <laughs> so feel free to scroll through the chat and read some of the other poems that are coming in. Oh, pertinent. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> rice. How many of us have got rice? <laughs> <laughs> that time of year. God, so cliched. I hate mine already. <laughs> oh, that's ah, wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> cliches are cliches because they're, they're, they have a grain of truth, much like rice. <laughs> well, oh, oh, that's yeah, good. Thank you. good. Yeah, yeah. How do you kick this guy out? <laughs> I think it's time for the virtual compile already with jokes oh, like that. Right. Hey, Kurt. How's it going? Good. Uh, yeah, good. You know, considering. Good to see you. I can see you too, but. Considering you've got COVID, have you? No, I do not. <laughs> but uh, I have a cold. I think my son gave me a cold. I just All have right. like a chest congestion. And, I, <laughs> and uh, you know, yeah, COVID yeah, light. That's really symptoms. funny. Oh, well, get well soon. I From sticky frustration. Anyway. <laughs> 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 I see that you live in Nagoya, yeah? It's hot. Jay's is really fun. Oh, yeah. Yes, way too hot for me over here. Yeah. Great. Jay, Gabe, Brent, Richard, Kurt. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so, oh, we got more coming in. Good. Natsumi, Kai. So, yeah, feel free to read some of the other poems in the chat here. <laughs> okay. Now, let's put on a. <laughs> all right Bush. so as you can see all where's, of us uh, are right where's right. kurtz oh, kurtz was the first yeah he's quick he's, he's the musical man <laughs> he's i bet he'd already uh, you'd already written that one hadn't you kurt? 
Thank you, Ramona. You prepared ahead of time. Nice. Oh, yeah, I prepared it ahead of time. <laughs> just for this All right, sorry, guys, just a minute here. So let's do part four of our cycle, listening to speaking. Okay, these are some liter literacy strategies. So these poems are about you. They're personal, they're contextualized, they're meaningful to the students because they're about the students. Okay, so the context is the poem itself. Unlike that image makes me think of Donald Trump. Sorry. <laughs> Please don't talk about him. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay. Apologize, so, yeah. uh, uh, where was I? Uh, yes. Yeah, so let's on. say the context of your lesson is food, right? Well, it would be in context if you taught it in a restaurant or in a supermarket. But these poems are in context because they're about each other. The student, it's about each other. Um, so we have some questions here. Does your poem actually represent your experience? Okay, why or why not? And uh, maybe we don't have time to do breakout rooms. So does your poem actually rep represent um, your experience? Number two, what did you learn about yourself? <laughs> and what did you learn about other people? What did you learn about your partner? I'm gonna put you in the same groups, okay? Very quickly, two minutes. Please talk to your friends. The questions are in the chat. Ready, go. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, so I hope you got to learn something about yourself and maybe your, your other fellow students. All right, so that will conclude the teaching part of my presentation. All right, yay. Yay. Hi, Vicky and Brent's got a sense of humor. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Q&A time. Thank you, Jay. I think I've got it. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. Okay, no um, questions. As usual. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Of course. Um, <laughs> so here is my website. You can download a whole bunch of haiku materials if you would like to use them in your classroom. Here is my 
email address if you have any questions. And if you want to email me your poem, that would be great. I could include it in a book if you would like. All right. And there's my reference. Okay, thank you. I'm getting that now. That's good. Okay, good. Somehow. Uh, I think I, uh, I have a question. Sure, Kurt. So like, I don't know how much like Japanese university, I mean, they're, your students are university students and I imagine they learn about haiku in high school. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever talk about what, uh, like when, you, when they talk about what they know about haiku in English, like how much background info do they bring in with them going into these kind of activities? Obviously for like us Westerners, we know about haiku sort of superficially, I think from mm -hmm. Fight Club or something, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like knowing syllables or whatever uh, and the structure. But like, do you ever have students that come in with like a lot of background information or students who are like big fans of haiku in Japanese? but maybe, you know, they don't know so much about it in English and so on. Like, do you ever have students like that? And have you learned or garnered any interesting background information from your students and in, in what you're teaching them? Mm -hmm. Cool, thanks. Yeah, thanks for the question. So, um, of course, they actually start studying haiku in Japanese in elementary school mm. in Japan. Um, and uh, they, play a karuta game where you right. read haiku and the first one to, to slap the card wins. So they have quite a lot of information about haiku um, to start out with. But uh, ironically, they don't really ask the students to write haiku very often, just to read it. Oh, interesting. Is when uh, uh, what my students have told me. And so a lot of them have never done creative writing, even in their L1, and they certainly haven't done it in their L2. But they do bring a lot of cultural knowledge. Wow. They bring a lot of, um, as I said, L1 transfer. So they know the word haiku. They know kireji, kigo. Um, so that's really great. And they've actually introduced me to Japanese haiku poets that I've never heard of. Because I only know like the big ones, you know. Like ba ba I know Basho. That's like the only real name. <laughs> He's kind of the Shakespeare of, of Japanese yeah. of literature. Um, so yeah, I know him and Isa and Busan um, and Shiki, but yeah, they introduced me to some cool ones that their high school teachers and junior high school teachers have introduced them to. Mm, interesting. But yeah, and of course, I always start out the class trying to activate this knowledge in the beginning. So um, I ask them questions. What do you know about haiku already? And I also do a survey to see if they've ever done second language creative writing and nobody has. So. Um, and then well, after they write, I create these books and they also enter the haiku in a haiku contest. If you know Ito en o Oi Ocha, the green tea that comes in the bottle, mm -hmm. um, every bottle of tea in Japan has a haiku on it, either oh, yeah. in English or in Japanese. So the next time you go to the convenience sure. and you buy a bottle of tea, look at the label and you will often see a haiku. And so, um, yeah, my students enter that every year as well. Oh, cool. Cool. Any other? Interesting. Thank you. Going to have to call it a day, I think, Jared, okay. because of the time. But thank oh, you very there's much. there's no poetry slam at the end of this. No. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Jared. That's a great thank you very much.